Hello, welcome to This Family Does Everything. My name is Alexandria, and this is a video just continuing Judge Doro and Daryl Brooks. This video includes a jury view of the vehicle. So let's sit back, watch, and analyze the Daryl Brooks trial. Would it be fair to say this isn't your first time during your career testifying in any type of criminal matter? Yes. Yes, as in? I have testified, testified before. So it would be fair to assume that you understand plaintiffs and defendants, correct? Objection, Perhaps. irrelevant, sustained, not relevant. <clears throat> Are you aware that only a living human being can make, bring a claim against a defendant? Objection, irrelevant, Grounds. argumentative. Grounds. Sustained for those reasons and as to the form of the question. <coughs> to the best of your knowledge, who can bring a claim against an alleged defendant? Objection, irrelevant. Grounds. Sustained, not relevant. <coughs> no further questions. Thank you, sir. Any redirect? No redirect of this officer, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Sir, you may step down. Thank you. Okay, get a room this point. I could start um, with another officer, but I don't think I'll complete his testimony. Um, what I'd like to do at this point is advise the jury about what is to happen next. I'm advised that everything is ready to go. <coughs> so, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you will now be taken to a garage attached to the Waukesha County Courthouse to view the vehicle recovered by the Waukesha Police Department. You will be taken to the garage by the jury bailiffs. During your trip to and from the garage, or while there, you are not to discuss this case with anyone. While at the garage, you are not to talk, and no one is to talk to you about the case except the judge. You are to remain with the other jurors. You are not to conduct an independent investigation now or at any time during the trial. At this time, please rise for the jury. And the jury bailiffs will wait until further instructed as to when to bring them over. The question was asked about whether they could bring notebooks and I instructed that they should not. All right, thank you, be seated. Um, we will be in recess while uh, the court and the parties uh, participate or at least observe the jury view. And given that it's 1135, unless something unanticipated happens that I would need to put on the record right away, then we also will be taking um, the lunch break after the jury view. Um, I believe we'll be over there for I don't think, let me put it this way, I don't think the process is going to take more than a half hour. I think it will take much less than that. I think what might take more is just getting all of us there and situated. Um, but let's say it takes to us to noon, we'll take an hour for lunch. So I would expect the parties to be back here um, at one. All right, thank you everyone. Thank you. Back on the record. Um, it is just after 1 p.m. Uh, appearances are as they have been. I do want to make a very brief record regarding the jury view. Um, I did have Madam Reporter take her steno machine and make uh, <clears throat> or take a contemporaneous record of the little bit that was said while we were there. Um, 
I can state for the record, and I also had Madam Clerk uh, take some minutes. Um, the court arrived at 1144. Um, the state arrived. The defendant arrived shortly thereafter. The parties were each given an opportunity to do a walk around before the ju jury came in. Uh, the defendant did that. And then I walked around as well with uh, my clerk. And then uh, we all were uh, positioned in various locations within the garage. The belly chains and handcuffs were removed from Mr. Brooks. He did not have leg restraints on that I could see. And uh, so when the jury was brought in, uh, he was not in any of that. And then I instructed the jurors at that point, uh, our civilian bailiff, Michael, was in the lead. I said, please come in, uh, walk around the vehicle one time slowly with the jurors, and then exit. That is what they did. Um, two videos were made. One was prior to anyone being in there. Uh, it was just the sheriff's department personnel, I should say prior to the parties being in there. Um, and they took a video of the garage and then a walk around the vehicle that was provided uh, to me at the conclusion. Uh, it was on a large type drive. And then I provided that to Mike Nyman and Zach Tremaine, who then provided that to the media. And then, and then the second part where we all were in there and the jury came through, that was also captured on video. All of that was put on a flash drive and will be marked as Courts Exhibit 1 along with uh, the docket entries Madam Clerk will make. And then, of course, um, if need be, if a transcript is ever needed, there, uh, I did document a few things as uh, we went through that process uh, so that there was, there's that contemporaneous record as well. Any party feel the need to add to the record I just made from the state? No, Your Honor, thank you. Uh, from you, sir? Uh, not to that, no. Okay. Thank you, then. All right, then I know the jury is ready uh, to be brought back out. I believe the state has additional witnesses. We do, Your Honor, and uh, I have uh, another large uh, poster board that I'd like to show with the next witness. Um, so I don't know if you'd like us to put it up on the witness stand now before he before they come out, or do we need the easel for, for that? Yeah, we'll need the easel too. All right, I'll have I'm. Since there's no jury out, you can put that on the witness stand now. Thank you. Maybe put it uh, facing, facing backwards, and then that will be there for the next witness. Sure, thank you. All right, and then anything from you, sir? In regards to this? Um, any other preliminary matters that you are asking the court to address? Uh, were my filings actually filed? You're talking about from this morning? Yes. Have they been scanned in so that you can get the originals back? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Um, I will ask Madam Clerk if that has happened. They have. All right, it has. Let me see. I think she, uh, in our papers that we have been keeping, there might have been another filing uh, from you. So whatever we have, they've all been entered into the record, and you're getting back as a courtesy um, those filings. That was the one this morning, and then these are the two originals that I had not given back yet. There were two that I gave him immediately, like I scanned them in right away, and then gave okay. them back. These are the two I was still holding. There was two other ones, so I have uh, one from October 5, one from October 13, and then one from October 19. These, just so we're clear, sir, I'm providing these as a courtesy back to you. Uh, because the clerk's office policy is once they're scanned in, uh, they are destroyed because then what's in the electronic file is what's kept. Um, they do not have the docket entries, though, because you requested the originals back. So I'll provide those to you. Okay. Then with that, we'll have the jurors brought out. Jurisdiction, Your Honor. The court's declining to address that further. 
I stand by my written decision that was entered last week. So we won't be proving it for the record? I stand by my written decision that was entered last week, sir. Judicial determination? It, it is a judicial determination. All rise right, for the jury. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. The state may call its next witness. Thank you. The state will call Detective Justin Rowe. Good afternoon, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is... First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and then spell each. Uh, Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, Rowe, R-O-W-E. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, Detective, how are you currently employed? City of Waukesha Police Department. Can you uh, briefly describe for the jury your experience in law enforcement? Um, from 2003 to 2009, I was a uh, security police officer with the United States Air Force. And then from 2009 to present, I've been a member of the Waukesha Police Department. And your current rank is that of detective? That's correct. I'd like to direct your attention to uh, the date of November 23, 2021. Were you on duty that day, sir? Yes, I was. Do you recall what your assignment was that day? I was tasked with going to the Maple Avenue and Northwest Avenue area um, neighborhoods to search for items that may have been discarded by Daryl Brooks. And were you alone in that task? No, I was accompanied by a, a whole team of other detectives and investigators. Uh, before you traveled to the neighborhood, did you have a plan of action? We did. We uh, planned to begin at uh, 338 Maple Avenue, which is where the vehicle was um, left prior to Daryl Brooks fleeing the scene south. So we had begun at that location and began to canvas our, our way south and west. Were you present when any items were discovered that were uh, relevant? Yes, I was. And just very briefly describe what those items were, sir. Objection leading. <laughs> Specialist Spackowitz and I um, were walking in the parking lot of 322 Maple Avenue, which is a large apartment complex, and we came across a right-footed sandal, a blue sandal, um, up against a fence area that separates the Dunbar neighborhood or street uh, homes from the Maple Avenue apartment complex. Are you aware of any other items that were recovered during this effort on that same day of November 23, 2021? Yes, uh, a short distance from that sandal, um, some other investigators did locate a sweatshirt and a left-footed blue sandal. Now, in addition to looking for items, uh, did you and other detectives attempt, attempt to obtain video from homeowners and businesses in the area? Objection leading. Um, overall, this foundation of the witness may answer. Yes, we did. And do you recall obtaining a video from the school district? Yes, we did. And do you recall what building or buildings uh, from the school district uh, video was recovered from? Objection leading. Overall, the witness may answer. It's a uh, building that's right on Maple Avenue. It's, uh, we refer to it as the School District of Waukesha. It's their administrative building, also known as the Lindholm Building. And you obtained uh, video from that location? Yes, we did. Did you also obtain video from uh, homeowners on Dunbar? Objection, leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, we did. Uh, specifically 435 Dunbar? Correct. Objection, leading. Overruled. It's foundational. Sir, please wait until I rule on the objection. Thank you. And how about uh, Central Street or Road? Yes, we did. Did you have an opportunity to review those videos that were collected? I did. And would you, did you uh, see anything of significance to this investigation in any of those videos? Objection. Um, overruled. The witness may answer. 
Yes. I'm going to show you an item that's been marked as exhibit number 131. It's up. All right. And uh, we're going to just uh, take it out of presentation. There we go. Okay. Um, what exhibit is it? This is 131, Mr. Brooks. What do you know exhibit 131 to contain, Detective Rowe? This is a video um, that is taken from uh, 425 Dunbar Avenue, which is the south side of Dunbar Avenue. And if you see on the upper, near the upper left-hand corner, the northern intersection area, there is a red sort of blur near <coughs> the bottom of a driveway right before the intersection. And that is going to be Daryl Brooks on that uh, sidewalk, and he's going to cross the street. And okay. Hold on one minute. I'm just going to remind the jury. It's up for the jury to determine what the facts are, not what any witness's opinion may be. You will ultimately need to decide uh, who is in that video. Go ahead. And, and I, I should ask a broader question. The exhibit itself, the whole exhibit, does it contain, do you know what's in Exhibit 131? Yes, I do. Does it contain more than one video, sir? Objection, Lee. Um, overruled, uh, I'll allow it. The witness may answer. Um, I believe this is one video of it itself. Sure, but the exhibit contains multiple videos and Correct. still shots? Yes. Okay. Objection noted. I'll overrule it. It's foundational. Go ahead. What are you looking at right now, sir? I'm looking at the beginning of the video of uh, Dunbar Avenue. Okay. Do you believe, um, well, strike that. Um, I'm going to ask the uh, assistant to play this video for you um, at your monitor, and then I'll ask you a question, okay? Okay. Before you do that for the record, how long of a clip is it? I was just looking for that because we're now in a PowerPoint, Your Honor. I don't know that I can tell you exactly until we get to the end. It looks like nine minutes or something. Nine, nine seconds and... Oh. 9.56 seconds, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Go ahead. All right, so we're playing this for you, Detective Rowe. All right, were you able to observe the video? Yes. And were you able to observe anything of significance to this investigation in the video? Objection. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it appears the defendant is crossing the street. This exhibit, I'm sorry. Um, are you aware of the other videos and pictures contained in Exhibit 131? Yes. Objection, lady. Overruled, the witness may answer. Once again, please wait till I rule on the objections. Do you believe all of the videos and pictures in Exhibit 131 are true and accurate? Uh, based off of the videos that were obtained from the homeowners and businesses that you testified to previously? Yes. Uh, move to uh, admit 131 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Thank you to the video. Your objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 131 in, in its entirety is received. And did you ask for permission to publish? I did. Go ahead. For the record, Your Honor, this is a PowerPoint. What's being displayed at the moment is slide number one. Thank you. Go ahead. Is it on the jury box? Okay. All right. Uh, please play the video in slide one. Right, the video has played completely, Your Honor. I'm going to ask to move to slide number two. Go ahead. Do you see what's shown on slide number two, Detective Rowe? Yes. Uh, describe what we're seeing in slide two. Upper left-hand corner, you're going to see another still image of the original video. 
and then below that you're going to see a zoomed in cropped image of the figure that uh, would be crossing the street. Okay. Have you seen this video uh, on other occasions, sir? Yes. And obviously the zoomed in uh, image is quite blurry. Absolutely. Okay. Um, when we played slide one, were you able to make out any details about the person in slide one that was crossing the street? Yes, it appeared the person had a red shirt. Okay. All right, we're going to go to slide number three, please. And you testified about receiving video from the school building at 222 Maple Avenue, is that right? Objection leading. Um, sustained us to the form of the question. Please rephrase. What is shown on slide three? Slide three is a view towards the rear parking lot of the Lindholm building, or also known as the School District of Waukesha Administration building. And I'm gonna request that we play the video in slide number three, Your Honor, in its entirety. Do you happen to know how many seconds? 5.97. Thank you, go ahead. Objection, rather busy. Overruled, you may play. Did it play? Yep. I'm sorry, I missed it. <laughs> okay, we'll go to slide, uh, next slide. Lost track, we're on four or five. Slide number four. Going to slide number four. All right, so again, uh, the camera, uh, or strike that, what are we seeing on slide four? So again, we're seeing a still shot of the previous video we just viewed. And then there is a zoom in fun function below that where it shows a cropped out photograph of a figure. Okay. And you've seen this video yourself in person, sir? Yes. What do you recall about what you were able to observe about the figure or subject uh, walking there behind the school? Objection, Lee. Overruled the witness may answer. The figure moves from right to left through the parking lot or north to south up until a fence in, until it gets reaches the fence on the left side of the picture. All right. Next slide, please. Do you recognize the image in slide number five? Yes. Or is it six? Five. Okay. Um, please tell us what you recognize this area to be. This is also the Lind Home Building. This is a camera that is deeper into the parking lot. Uh, which means that it will be a closer view of the previous um, video. Okay. And, uh, I'm going to ask that we play this clip, Your Honor, and for the record, it's a total of 20.81 seconds. Go ahead. Objection. Your objection's noted. Go ahead and play. Thank you. Please turn to the next slide. What do we see in slide number six? Upper left hand corner is a still shot of the video and below that is a screen capture of a figure in that photo. Okay. Next slide, slide seven. So currently we're looking at a black screen, correct? Yes. Do you know what this video is uh, going to show, sir? Objection, speculative. He's black. <laughs> um, overall, the witness may answer if he's able. Yes, it's another uh, home security camera at uh, 126 Central Avenue. All right. It's a total of 20 seconds, 20.03, I'm sorry, 20.09 <laughs> seconds. And we will play in its entirety, Your Honor. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, next slide, please. What do we see on this final slide, sir? Upper left-hand corner is a still shot from the video. 
and the screen that's been cropped at the bottom is a image of the defendant. All right. That completes Exhibit uh, 131. Detective Bro, um, based on these video clips that you obtained and the canvas uh, that you and your team did in the neighborhood, were you able to put together a map basically tracking um, the travels of Daryl Brooks through the neighborhood that afternoon? Objection. I don't consent to being called that name. Maybe. The objections are noted, overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. And I should include, um, do you know if, uh, do you know the location where Daryl Brooks was arrested? Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I'm aware he was arrested on Elizabeth Street. Okay. And are you aware of uh, reports to other officers as far as citizens that had contact with Mr. Brooks <coughs> in the area of Elizabeth Street? Objection, I don't consent to be called that name. Noted, the witness may answer. Yes, I'm aware. All right. Uh, behind you, sir, is a large poster board that's facing backwards. I'm going to ask you to please assist me by putting that face forward on the easel behind you. Can you please tilt that so that the court and Mr. Brooks can see as well? Yes, and we're also going to put up the digital copy, Your Honor. I just wanted to. Oh, uh, okay. Then that's fine then. Okay. Thank you. I'll have him work off the digital copy. But before you sit down, Detective Rowe, sure. in the bottom right-hand corner of that poster board, there is a sticker. Do you see that? Yes, an objection meeting. Could you help us by telling us the exhibit number? I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, it's foundational. I'll allow the question to be asked. Go ahead and uh, finish your question and answer. What's the exhibit <laughs> number, Detective Rowe? 130. Okay. Thank you. Detective Rowe, do you believe that Exhibit 130 is an accurate summary of uh, the, the travels and the contacts uh, by Mr. Brooks on the evening of November 21, 2021? Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. Uh, move to admit 130 and permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. <coughs> um, I'm sorry. I cut you off. What's the basis, if you have? Relevancy. All right. Uh, the objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 130 is received. Permission to publish. <coughs> An electronic copy is granted. Thank you. All right. Uh, Detective Rowe, I know we're, we're back out so we can see the whole map at this point. We will zoom in in a moment, but the northernmost uh, event that's reflected on the map reads what? Officer Stolten shoots at SUV at 4.39 p.m. Okay. Do you know that to be accurate based on your knowledge of this investigation? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. And then there appears to be a red line from that point going south down the middle or uh, right side of the map. Do you see where I'm referring to, sir? Objection. Yes, I do. Um, overruled, it's foundational, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. What does that red line um, from the star where we noted Officer Scolton fired, the red line going south, what does that represent, sir? The solid red line is the route taken by vehicle. Okay. And where did it go? What roads? Objection. Leading. Overruled. Go ahead and answer. Vehicle traveled south on Northwest Avenue, made a left-hand turn to go east onto Prospect Court. The vehicle then drove behind some residences on Maple Avenue before coming to a rest in the driveway of 320, 338 Maple. Okay. I'm going to ask Ms. Gussie to please um, zoom in on that upper right-hand quadrant of the exhibit please and specifically um, the area of 338 maple please okay 
So um, you said the vehicle traveled through the backyards uh, off of Prospect Court, is that right? That's correct. Right. Right. Yes, sir. Um, <coughs> sir, please wait until I rule on the objection. Um, the objection is noted. Um, it's overruled. Now you may answer. Okay. Can you just, there's, that's a touch screen in front of you, so just kind of point out the area that you're speaking of right now. I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes. Using the touch screen, can you point out the path of the vehicle that you just were describing for us? Objection. Go ahead. And when... It came down West Avenue, right? Yes. And what road did it turn onto? It turned east onto Prospect Court. And then when it turns off of Prospect Court, is that a road? Yes. Leading. Oh. I'm sorry. When it left uh -huh. Prospect, I'm sorry. Sir, which que sorry? Which question were you objecting to? The last one. About which way it turned, or turning onto the, Prospect? The, the way it was actually. It. Um, you know what? I don't even remember what it was, so I'll sustain it and ask the state to re-ask. Okay, sure. At some point, did the vehicle leave Prospect Court? Yes, it did. When it did that, was it on a roadway? No. So the line you drew from south from Prospect Court represents what, sir? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Backyards? On the far right corner of the map, do you see a blue dot in the same area we're talking about here? Objection, lady. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. And what does that represent, please? The uh, camera at Les Paul School. And where's what's uh, the address of Les Paul School? Objection. If you know, or Red the street. Overruled, the witness may answer. I don't know the address, but it is right off Maple. Okay. And you see just below that, there's a yellow dot with the name Wauwatosa Officer Sailors. You see that? I do. Okay. Now, you've uh, stopped drawing your line there, your yellow line over the red line. You see what I'm referring to? Yes. And in that area, I notice the line becomes dashed. Do you see that? Yes. Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Again, please wait until I rule on the objection. Yes. Thank you. What's the difference between the red solid line and the dashed line, sir? The dashed line is the path that the defendant took on foot. Okay. And do you see then, moving back to the uh, left on the map, the two boxes in white, uh, Depicting where the sandals were recovered? Objection, lady. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Is that consistent with your recollection, sir? Yes. The uh, dashed line then moves, uh, so there's there's two green X's, correct? You see where I'm referring to, sir? Objection, lady. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. And then the Red dash line moves to the left or west from the last, the second green X, correct? Yes. Okay. What's going on at this point, sir? This is a point where the defendant is traversing through yards towards the west. Okay. And did we just see the video of him crossing the street there on Dunbar? <coughs> Objection and leading. Overruled. Yes. Um, move up a little, please, or more to the back. Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay. Clear the line, please, Madam Clerk. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Is the Lindum building on this map, sir? Yes. Could you point it out? <clears throat> Did we just see the two videos from those two cameras at the Lindum building in? The last exhibit, 131. Objection, leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Okay. Keep going south on the map, 
what's the next event that's noted, sir? Do you want, can we clear? Yeah, yes, clear, I'm sorry. Thank and you. maybe we can uh, move further south on the map. Thank you. So the first uh, thing that I see is makes phone call at 4.47 p.m. Dominic Capron at 417 Central Avenue. Okay, is that the location of Central Avenue, sir? I'm yeah. sorry, 417 Central Avenue? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, it is. Okay. And are you aware of uh, conversation also uh, reported by Sean Backler at his residence on Central Avenue? Yes. Is his residence shown on the map, sir? Yes. Can you please circle these uh, two conversations that you just identified for us? Objection, lady. Overruled, you may indicate on the map. Okay. Now I see the dash line uh, moving to the west again. Do you see that, sir? Yes. What's happening in this area, please? Objection, Spike Lee. Overruled. The witness may answer. This is the camera at 126 Central Avenue. Um, Mr. Brooks is seen on camera moving to the west at 4:48 p.m. Was that in Exhibit 131 that we just showed the jury? Objection, lady. Overruled, you may answer. Yes. Which video was that one? Do you remember? Objection, lady. Overruled, you may answer. It was the, uh, I believe it was the last video that we had watched prior to showing the, uh, the map. Okay. Now at this point, the dash line ends. Is that right? That's correct. Why is that? Objection, speaking to you. I'll allow the witness to give his opinion because we don't have any indication as to where um, or when Mr. Brooks crossed uh, West Avenue to get to Elizabeth Street. Are you aware that uh, there was a report of contact between Mr. Brooks and a witness identified as Ellen Cordes? I'm sorry, Aaron Cordes? Objection, leading. Um, overall, the witness may answer. <coughs> yes, I'm aware. And is that area where that meeting occurred depicted on this map? Yes, it is. Where did that meeting occur? It happened uh, just west of Northwest Avenue on Elizabeth Street. And is Aries Industries shown on this map, sir? <clears throat> yes, it is. Could you identify Aries Industries? Are you aware of uh, video from that location uh, showing person appearing to be Mr. Brooks approaching the front? door lobby of the business. Objection, I don't consent to be called that name. Noted, the witness may answer. <coughs> Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Okay. And then finally, uh, the last uh, red X on the bottom left corner there, what does that depict, sir? Uh, that depicts 553 Elizabeth Street, the location of arrest, which was at 514 p.m. And that is the residence of Daniel Ryder, and Mr. Brooks makes and receives a phone call at 5.03 to 5.05 p.m. Do you believe uh, this map is an accurate documentation of the investigation, again, as to the uh, travel of Daryl Brooks this evening, on the evening of November 21-21? Objection, speculative, and I don't consent to be in court that day. Your objections are noted. Overruled, but it was I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure. Do you believe uh, this map is an a accurate summary of the travel and whereabouts of Daryl Brooks at various points on the evening of November 21-21? Objection, speculative, and I don't consent to be called that name. Your objections are noted. They are overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. All right, thank you, Detective. I don't have any other questions. Any cross-exam for this witness, sir? Cross-exam for this witness, sir? Yep. All right, thank you. Begin when you're ready. <coughs> so, Officer Rowe, uh, uh, you repeatedly referred to the alleged defendant's name. How did you come into that uh, information? Based on the entirety of the investigation. And when did you come into the knowledge of the alleged defendant's name? I don't remember. 
uh, when did your part of the investigation start? Um, after he drove the SUV through the parade, I was called at home to come in and uh, help the departments with the investigation. And just so we clear for the record, is the jury asking you questions or me? I'm sorry, I did not hear the question. Repeat your question, please. Well, I was referring to when I asked a question, he turns towards the jury as if they're the ones asking the question. That's not a question, Your Honor. It, it is a question. We did ask a question about that. Yes. I think you're asking why does he do that to that extent the witness may answer. I'm here to present the case to the jury. So I follow that fundamentally. But for the sake of making sure you hear the questions right, wouldn't it be fair to say that you should pay attention to the questions being answered Objection or being asked, rather? Assumes the fact, not in evidence. Sustain this to the form of the question. Please rephrase. Wouldn't it make sense to focus on the questions so you can, can hear them clearly? Objection argumentative. Still assumes the fact, not in evidence. Sustain. You made reference to you being here to present the case to the jury. So is that the reason why you decided to testify? Objection to the relevance. Grounds. Overruled the witness may answer. I don't understand your question. Uh, were you able to hear my question clearly? I don't understand your question. Were you able to hear my question clearly? Objection argumentative, Your Honor. Sustained. Next question, please. Or rephrase the previous question to the one that was asked just now. What, what, was, what was not understood about the question that you were asked? Objection argumentative. Grounds. Um, sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase. What wasn't clear about what I was asking? Same objection, Your Grounds. Honor. It's the objection is sustained. Let's go back and ask the question that he says he didn't understand and, and rephrase it, please, or move on. Your choice. Was your sole reason for testifying here today? Objection relevance. Let's let Mr. Brooks get the question out. Go ahead. Oh, Josh, I thought that was it. Are you testifying today strictly to prove your case to the jury? Objection, misstatement of his testimony. Grounds that that's what he said. Sustained as to the form of the question, misstates the prior testimony. That's what he said. So why did you why did you decide to testify here today? Objection. That's a legally inaccurate question, Your Honor. Please rephrase the question. I'm sustaining the question asked as to the form of the question. I don't know how I'm supposed to rephrase that. without having the same form of the question, that helps. I'll rule if there's an objection, but ask a question, please. <laughs> Did you seek to testify here today in this matter? No. So how did you ultimately come to that decision? 
objection, that's a misstatement, Your Honor. It was not his decision. Sustained as to the form of the question assumes a fact, not an evidence. Were you subpoenaed? Yes. Do you recall by whom you were subpoenaed to testify? Uh, District Attorney Sue Opper from the Washington County District Attorney's Office. And at that time you were subpoenaed, you decided to testify? I don't believe it's my decision. Well, it would be fair to say that you didn't have to show up, right? Would that be fair to say? No, I had to show up. But would it be fair to say that you could have chosen not to? No, it would not be fair to say that. Exhibit 131 that was shown to you. Um, have you seen that video footage before today? Yes, I have. Do you recall who showed it to you before today? I don't recall who showed it to me. Would it be fair to say you've seen it multiple times before today? Yes, I've seen it a number of times. And do you recall when you were first shown that video? Not off the top of my head. Was it the same day of the incident, the days following, sometime after? I don't recall when I saw the video the first time. And what about uh, Exhibit 130? Had you seen that video footage before today? Objection, Your Honor. 130 is a map. Well, the map. Had you seen the map before today? I'm, I don't really think it. Just for the record, I'll um, sustain the objection just because it referenced the wrong number, but I believe you rephrased. So go ahead. The witness may answer. Can I ask the question again, please? Had you seen the map of Exhibit 130 before today? Yes, I have. Multiple times as well? Yes, numerous times. Any idea why you viewed this so many times, multiple times? Unsure. Were you able to obtain any more information upon seeing the map numerous times that you didn't obtain when first seeing the map? No. So it would be fair to say you pretty much knew what the map was detailing each and every time you saw it? Yes. And on that map, Exhibit 130, you made reference to at some point the, the dotted line and it, it stops at some point. Would that be fair to say? Could you be more specific? The, the dotted line that was, that was referred to on the map. Do you want the map brought up? Would that be helpful to you? Or maybe it be, might be helpful to him. He's got the large map, but if you want to... So, if you can see the dotted line on the, on the map behind you... Yes. Is it fair to say that the dotted line stops at some point? 
around Central Avenue, maybe? Yes, there's a couple lines that seem to come to Central Avenue or egress out of Central Avenue that do stop. And you stated that, well, what was the reason that you stated that that line stops, the dotted line? I stated that uh, it's because we don't know the exact location where you cross the street uh, to get over to Elizabeth Street. And why, what, were there no cameras present at that point or how, how did, how did you lose the path of travel at that point? We didn't find any cameras or any eyewitnesses in that area. So it would be fair to say at that point you, were, you weren't sure what happened? I know, I know that you crossed the street at some point. We just don't know where. How do you know that? Because you were arrested on Elizabeth Street. Did you see any crossing of, I think you said that was West? Would that be West Avenue that you were referring to that you don't see any crossing of? What's your question? Is that West Avenue that you stated that you don't see, that you didn't see any crossing of? That is Northwest Avenue. Or Northwest Avenue, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the streets. Northwest Avenue. And you don't have any visual, visual footage or any eyewitnesses, as you said, to say for sure if Northwest Avenue was crossed. We didn't obtain any witness statements or any eyewitness or any uh, video of the suspect crossing the street. And what day, what day were, what day were you doing your part of the investigation? Was that the same evening or the next few days after the, the incident or? Uh, can you clarify which investigation you're talking about? <coughs> the one that you took part in, your part of the, the investigation. Are you, I'm not, I don't understand uh, what time frame you're asking for. What day, what, what day did you start your part of the investigation? Well, we started the investigation as soon as he ran people over in the parade. And you were there? I responded to the parade after he had done that. Were you at the parade? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say you were on call? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say you don't know when your part of the investigation started then, right? It would not be fair to say that. You don't recall what time it was when you started your part of the investigation? As soon as I responded. And you don't recall when you were dispatched to respond? It's in my report. Um, I don't remember the time exactly, but it's in my report. And at that time, did you know the identity or name of any alleged suspects at that time that you were dispatched? At the time that I was uh, sent to the city of Waukesha, I did not know the identity of the suspect. You made reference to a report. Do you recall when you wrote that report or did you write the report yourself? 
Yes, I typically type my own reports. And do you recall when you submitted that report? I have no idea what day I submitted the report. So when you were first dispatched, what did you do? I drove to the city of Waukesha and met with members at the <coughs> Waukesha Police Command Unit. And were you dispatched to any location from that point? I was not dispatched. Were you sent to any location from that point? I was assigned with uh, taking a number of investigators with myself and walking the entire parade route, going from establishment to establishment, bar to bar, restaurant to restaurant, and obtaining phone numbers and names of people who were present at the parade and who had witnessed something and would be um, followed up with later by a member of the Detective Bureau. So it would be fair to say you, you did some interviews at that time? Yes. Do you recall how many? No. And after conducting these interviews, what did you do? So at that time, after conducting your interviews and then going back to your home, did you have the, the name or ID of any suspects at that time? Yes. And whom were you told by? I recall. Do you recall who you submitted your typed report to? I don't understand your question. Do you recall who you submitted your typed police report to? No. <coughs> I'm assuming uh, your law enforcement agency doesn't type up reports and just leave them sitting on the desk. Would that be fair to say? That'd be correct. Any reason why you wouldn't recall who you gave your report to? Well, it's electronically submitted. And from there, does it have a specific uh, sergeant or lieutenant or captain or someone that it goes to from that point? If you recall, or if you know? I wouldn't know. So it would be fair to say, once you type a report and submit it, you're not sure who sees it? Correct. Would you say it's fair that because of you not knowing who your report is, submitted to that your report can be altered in some kind of way? Especially being that you don't know who sees it? The reports are done via PDF style um, reporting. It's uh, protected by my username and my password. And when it's submitted, um, it's usually not altered unless I request it to be altered. But it is fair to say that there's a possibility that it could be tampered with because you, you don't know for sure who all sees it. 
It's entirely inaccurate. How so? My report is accurate. Right? My report is the way that it was written, the way that I wrote it myself. So you've had a chance to read your submitted report after you submitted it? Yes. And to the best of your knowledge, is exactly word for word as you remember typing it? It is my, it is my report, it is what I typed, and it is accurate. Word for word? Yes. Do you recall how many pages long the report was? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. Please move on. Do you recall if the report was lengthy? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Next question, please. Grounds for the sustain? Relevance. And you stated that you read the report after you submitted it. Do you know how long it was before you were able to see the report that you typed? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Well, he already answered that. Then I'll object as asked and answered, Your Honor. Sustained. That question wasn't answered, answer, but okay. I see, I see. Do you recall when, when you typed your report? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Not relevant. How's that not relevant if he already answered that he typed a report? Please continue, sir. Grounds for the sustain. Relevance. He answered that he typed a report. So how's it not relevant if he if he recalls when he, when he typed it? Please continue, sir. <sighs> Got to be kidding me. Did you file any claim related to this matter? No. Do you know if anyone who did? Did what? Do you know? of anyone who filed a claim in relation to this incident? No. Do you know who the plaintiff is in this incident? Objection Grounds. relevance. You may answer that question. Go ahead. Can you ask the question again? Do you know who the plaintiff is in this incident? Well, the plaintiff would be the state of Wisconsin. Is the state of Wisconsin a human being or an entity? Objection grounds. representative um, sustained on relevance grounds. Have you ever had any interaction with the plaintiff in this incident? Objection grounds. Relevant, legally inaccurate. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Were you ever contacted by the plaintiff in this incident? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Would you call the state of Wisconsin a living, breathing human being? Or That's entity? an answer. Grounds because I didn't ask that question. It's not relevant. Sustained. Next question. It's please. very relevant. Seems like there's no plaintiff. Jury will disregard statements made by oh, the man. attorney's oh, name and the parties. They are not evidence. Please Stop ask no question. Slip. So, to your knowledge, the plaintiff is the state of Wisconsin. Do you see him present in the courtroom today? Objection, irrelevant, Grounds. sustained. Relevance. Can you identify the plaintiff state of Wisconsin? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Sir, please continue uh, with, and not on this topic. Next question, please. To the best of your knowledge, you're not even sure if 
you've ever even had any interaction with the plaintiff state of Wisconsin, correct? Objection, argumentative, Grounds. and compound. Grounds. Sustained. Definitely wasn't compound. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this incident? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. The witness may answer. No. Have you read or seen the complaint? No. No further questions. All right, thank you, sir. Any redirect? No, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. Detective Rose should be dismissed, please. And yes, could we get the exhibit? Yeah, why don't you grab that exhibit and take it? That one has the exhibit sticker, correct? Yes. All right, we can keep it uh, by the state for now, and then later on it can be brought over to the clerk. All right, the state may call its next witness. Good afternoon, sir. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Um, do we need this easel up? No. All right. We're going to have to. Yeah, or Detective Raglan can retrieve it. Yes. She's got to be ready. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Please remain standing. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Brian Schultz, R-Y-A-N-S-C-H-U-L-T-Z. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. <coughs> Sir, how are you employed? I work for the Wisconsin State Patrol. How long have you been in law enforcement? I've been in law enforcement since 2014. Have all those years been with Wisconsin, with the Wisconsin State Patrol? Yes. What is your current position? My current position is the mechanical inspector for the Wisconsin State Patrol Technical Reconstruction Unit. Can you describe the duties of that position? Overruled. The witness may answer. Um, my job basically is to conduct thorough and systematic inspections of vehicles that have been involved in crashes. Um, that can entail something as simple as taking photographs and looking at light bulbs to something more in depth or actually take the vehicles apart and actually look at the moving parts of the vehicles. Did you receive any training in order to perform those duties? Objection, relevance. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Can you briefly describe that training for the jury? Objection, relevance. Overruled, the witness may answer. Uh, a lot of the training that I received was on the job from prior inspectors. Prior to this, I was a diesel mechanic, and in addition to that, um, I have ASC and SAE certifications. And not being in, having any interest in cars, what are those certifications? Objection leading. Overruled, foundational, the witness may answer. Um, SAE is for the electrical components in a car, basically, for the part that I am certified in. Um, ASE is for the mechanical components, which stands for the Automotive Service Excellence, <coughs> is what I believe it stands for. What is the purpose of a mechanical inspection? Uh, the purpose of a mechanical inspection is to determine if there was anything that was incorrect, defective, or broken on a vehicle um, prior to the crash that would have caused the vehicle itself to cause or contribute to the crash. On December 6, 2021, were you directed to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab to view a vehicle? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. It's foundational. Go ahead. Yes. What information did you have prior to going to that location? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Uh, the information that I was given is that I was to set up an appointment there to look at a uh, Ford Escape that had been involved in a crash in the parade in Waukesha. Did you go to that location on that date? <coughs> yes, I did. Did you do a mechanical inspection of the vehicle that you were sent to look at? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes, I did. 
After <coughs> performing your inspection, did you draft a report? Yes, I did. And did that report containing the findings of your mechanical inspection from December 6th? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. I provided to you prior to you going up on the stand what's been marked as Stibit, States Exhibit 83. Do you have that in front of you? Yes. Can you briefly um, identify it for um, how it's labeled, how many pages it consists of? Uh, what exhibit is that? Exhibit uh, 83. 83. It's the uh, Crash Reconstruction Mechanical Inspection Report. The whole report is Exhibit 83? Correct. Yes. The whole report. Go ahead. I haven't ruled on it yet, so go ahead and uh, ask your questions, Attorney Daisy. Sir, how many pages does this report consist of? Ten. And that is front and back sides? Correct. Objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. And on the face sheet of Exhibit 83, um, what information does it contain on that as it relates to this investigation? <coughs> um, at the top, it contains a uh, case number and recon number, which match my name, the reconstructionist, and then it begins the report and um, vehicle identification information, and then on the bottom, it's marked with uh, exhibit number 83. What car were you inspecting? Objection leading. Um, overruled the witness may answer. 2010 Ford Escape. And what color was it? Objection leading. Overruled, you may answer. Red. And the license plate number associated with that vehicle? A. Adam D. David P. Paul 9256. And on the report, um, the vehicle identification number on Exhibit 83, um, where did that information come from? The vehicle identification number I verify on the inside of the door jam of the vehicle. Um, it's there's two VINs on each vehicle. One's a public VIN under the windshield, and one is inside the door jam of the vehicle. I always use the one inside the door jam of the vehicle first. Take note of it, and then cross-reference it with the public VIN on the vehicle to make sure that they both match. And did they in this case? Objection. Uh, I have the ten pages, and nowhere on here does it say is exhibit. Nowhere on here. That's because it was marked for purposes of trial. It has an exhibit sticker now. So your objections noted. It's overruled, and uh, the well, witness I'm not privy to the same. Thing. The witness may answer the question. It's been marked as an exhibit. Go ahead, sir. Can you restate the question? I forgot what it was. I think I did too. But let's go with this one. Um, is the the number that you saw on the door, you said that you cross-referenced it with the uh, VIN number, public VIN number. Um, did you do that in this case? Yes. And did they match? Yes. Okay. Does it give a drivetrain description on that first page, or front page? Yes, it does. And first of all, I don't know what that means, but um, what is that? Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Drivetrain description describes the drive of the vehicle, basically how it's operated on the roadway. So in this case, it's an automatic automatic transmission. doesn't have a clutch. You don't have to shift the gears, and it's front-wheel drive, meaning that it's not all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive like a pickup truck. It's just front-wheel drive. And there's, is there a picture on the front of Exhibit 83? Yes. Overruled, the witness may answer. Just a reminder to wait until I've ruled on any objection. Thank you. Yes. And what is that picture of? It's a picture of the 2010 escape. That you did the mechanical inspection on? Objection leading. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yes. Have you had, you authored this report? I did. Have you had a chance to review it since you've authored it? Yes. Is the information contained within this report accurate? Objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, it is. I would ask, I would move States Exhibit 83 into evidence. Objection.
Your objection is noted. It is overruled. Exhibit 83 is received. So is my paperwork ever going to say Exhibit 83, or is it just going to be this? Mr. Brooks, I'll take that up outside the presence of the jury later, but we're going to continue. It was Go brought ahead. up in front of the jury. Mr. Brooks, we're going to continue with the questioning of this witness. What are y'all trying to pull over here? Mr. Brooks, please. This is no one's. The, no, please, the exhibit, to my understanding, has previously been That's provided to you. You have it. It's now been marked as an exhibit for trial purposes. I've got something I don't have, though. Go ahead. That's not how it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be fit. Attorney Basie, I trust that this was previously turned over. It was, and I believe the defendant has a copy of it in front of him. Thank and you. Where does Please it say continue. Exhibit 83? Does it, it doesn't say that this was Again, going to be we'll used as Again, we'll take this up outside the presence of the jury later. It's not something we need to do right now. Go ahead and ask your questions. Thank you, Your Honor. And I would object and move to strike from the record any commentary that the defendant was making um, in the last five minutes. What was that? Court will strike the commentary that was made. I'm not sure if it was picked up or not, but as a reminder to the jurors, the statements made by parties and lawyers are not evidence. Um, the testimony and other evidence that's received is the evidence the jury will ultimately consider. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir, can you briefly describe the condition of the vehicle when you inspected it on December 6th? Uh, yeah, the vehicle had uh, quite a bit of front end damage. The uh, bumper cover was pushed back. The grill was pushed back into the engine bay um, and into the radiator. That was also pushed backwards in towards the engine. The hood was folded up in the air. Both lights were broken out of the front. Um, there was a quite a bit of debris and unknown things stuck to the exterior of the vehicle. Um, and there was also some damage to the sides of the vehicle. Do you know why you had to go to the Wisconsin State Crime Lab in order to do the inspection? Objection leading. Um, overrule the witness may answer. I was requested to go to the State Crime Lab to do the inspection because they had not yet completed um, DNA sampling. So until they had it finished, it was <laughs> going to be retained inside the crime lab. So in the interest of not moving the vehicle again, once they were done with DNA, they had me come to the crime lab to do the testing. An inspection. So the first section of your report, and I'm just going to direct your attention to page three of Exhibit 83, um, talks about the tires and the suspension and tie rods. Do you see that? Objection leading. Overrule. The witness may answer. Yes. And can you describe for the jury what part of the inspection, describe this part of the inspection. Objection. Overruled, the witness may answer. The report's been received by the, <coughs> by the court, and the state may direct the witness to various points at its discretion. Yeah, when was it made in the committee? Because I wasn't aware of that. Go ahead, Attorney Basie. You may continue. Thank you. Sir, can you describe the information contained in the first section of the report under the heading, Tires, Wheels, Steering, Suspension, Brakes? Objection B. Overruled. The witness may answer. So under this section, it's broken down into four parts. One for axle one left, which is the driver's side front axle. The left side would refer to it as you're sitting in the vehicle facing forward. Um, the right side would refer to the passenger side. So axle one is the frontmost axle, axle two is the rearmost, left and right, and it breaks each individual um, wheel end component systems down. And then from that, I take each one apart and inspect them thoroughly, brakes, tires, steering components on the front axle, obviously, suspension condition, and anything else that's at the wheel end that I can inspect. And did you do that in this case? Yes. What observations did you make? Um, first, on axle one left, which would be the driver's side front, <coughs> the tie rod end was worn. Um, 
about an eighth of an inch of play in the tie rod end in the ball joint itself. So when you turn the steering wheel or turn the wheel, there was a little bit of play in the tie rod. Still attached, um, still intact, still functioning, still able to steer the vehicle, but just worn to the point that it needed replacement before it got any worse. Was that something that would create any problems in operating the car, for example, on November 21st, 2021? Objection is speculative. Overruled, this witness may answer. He's been, um, hold on, he's been qualified under 907.02. Um, I direct your attention to 907.02 through 907.07, Mr. Brooks. Go ahead. I don't consider to be in court that day, but that's referring to a specific date. How do we know that's not speculation? Um, the objections noted it's overruled. The witness may answer. It would not. The vehicle would still steer and drive just the same as any other vehicle. It would just have play in the steering wheel and it would make a little bit of a clunking noise potentially when you turn the wheel. You would maybe hear a clunking noise from that left front tie rod. But again, operationally, the person driving that car wouldn't have any trouble steering based upon that issue? <coughs> not at all. Okay. What other observations did you make? Um, other observations I made were that all the tires were evenly worn on all four axle ends. Um, the, I believe it was the left rear, yep, the left rear axle, the tire on that axle was bigger than the other three. So there's also a chart referenced later in my report that shows the difference between the two. Um, the tires that are recommended to be on the vehicle are size 235-70-R16, which was what was equipped on the vehicle, except on the left rear, which was 245-75-R16, which is one full size bigger in dimension and aspect ratio. What, if any, impact would that have on how a person's ability to drive that vehicle? So. Uh, one size bigger in tire is usually not the end of the world, being that it's the single tire, it can have an effect, but it's on the rear of the vehicle. Being a front wheel drive vehicle, the speeds are reported off of the front axle of that vehicle. So that's where the speedometer would get its speeds from. Um, the only time it would be notable would be during a heavy ABS brake application. And that would be at a higher rate of speed with full brake application where the ABS system kicks in on the vehicle. That's where it could be noticeable. And by could be, I mean the sizes are very similar. They're about an inch and a half in difference. Revolutions per mile are not that far apart. The ABS system might not even pick up a difference between the two. When you say at higher speeds, are we talking, what are we talking? Uh, uh, higher speed. <clears throat> Overrule the witness may answer. Higher speeds, I mean something like highway speeds, 55 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour or greater. Any other observations made with regard to in that area? The only other observations that I made were that um, all the brakes were in good working condition and had adequate thickness left on the brake pads um, for stopping of the vehicle. All four brakes were in good working shape and they were able to be locked at the time of inspection. So and I, I let me clarify if I didn't ask you this. Um, the information you were provided was that this vehicle was involved in a crash? Objection. Ask and answer. Um, overruled uh, given the nature of the testimony being provided. Uh, the statement clarify that. So go ahead, you may answer. Yes. And did you, do you know the date of that crash? Uh, I know it was in November, I don't know the exact date. Okay, thank you. So with regards to the braking system, was there anything, did you find anything at all in your inspection of that vehicle that would have caused the brakes not to work or not to work effectively on the date of the crash, or prior to the crash? Objection speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. No, I did not. Actually, since your inspection took place after the crash, would that be your same answer with regard to as it was on December 6, 2021, there were no brake problems? Objection, speculative. Overruled, the witness may answer. <coughs> that is correct. The brake still functioned at the time of inspection fully. Thank you. What was the next area that you then inspected? 
The next area that I inspected was the electronic system um, and general cabin system of the vehicle, cabin being where the occupants sit inside of the vehicle. Um, I did that by examining light bulbs on the exterior of the vehicle and then systematically working my way into the vehicle where I could. What observations did you make in that area? Um, both headlights were, um, the lenses were damaged but the lights were still working. Um, the lights were in the high beam position and in the automatic <coughs> position from the driver's cabin. What does that indicate? Objection leading. Overruling the witness may answer. So that indicates that when the vehicle was left at the last time that the vehicle headlights were in the automatic position, meaning that if it's dark enough out that the headlights would turn themselves on, and the selector stick was in the high beam position, meaning that the last time the lights were in use, they were in high beam mode. Thank you. Continue on. Um, from there, uh, just examine the throttle linkage, um, horn, and the other driver controls from inside the cabin. So let's talk about the throttle controls. First of all, what is that? So the the um, overall, the witness may answer. Everyone's familiar with the throttle pedal in the vehicle. You press the pedal, and it makes the vehicle accelerate. From there, on this specific vehicle, it's an electronic signal that is transferred from the throttle pedal to the throttle body on the vehicle's engine on the intake. Um, that electrical signal opens a butterfly valve which allows more air and fuel into the engine, speeds the engine up. If you let off the throttle, it reduces and closes that valve. On this particular vehicle, um, I checked the throttle pedal first inside the cab. It was free moving, no binding, no obstructions. I was able to smoothly press it to the floor and release it and it acted just as it should. Uh, from there, I went under the hood of the vehicle. On this particular vehicle, the crime lab asked that I did not open the hood just because of the amount of DNA evidence on the front of the vehicle. They didn't want me to come in contact with anything. So they asked that I not open the hood if at all possible, which on this vehicle, I was able to still access the throttle because of the way the hood was bent up in the air. I was able to actually reach in from the side of the vehicle and access the throttle body components through the damaged hood portion where I normally would not have been able to reach. Um, from there, I was able to look at the exterior of the throttle and everything was in clean, clear working condition, no visible damage, no visible issues. I removed the intake tubing from the engine and inspected the actual throttle plate itself, which was in the closed position. The closed position indicates either an idle or that the vehicle is turned off. I was able to then actuate the butterfly valve itself from fully closed to fully open, and when I released it, it went back to fully closed just as designed by Ford. Did there appear to be any problems with the throttle? No, there was not. I'm just gonna, I know you call it a throttle, I call it a gas pedal, it's one and the same, correct? Objection okay. leading. Um, sustain this to the form of the question, please rephrase. What is the difference between a gas pedal and a throttle? Nothing. Thank you. What was your next area? The next area I went on to was the uh, seat belts inside the vehicle. And then from there, I actually was able to test the vehicle for function. Did you then come to conclu a conclusion section of your report? I did. And is that starting on page 5 of 10? Yes. Okay. Um, did you check the power steering system? I did. And what observations did you make of that? Aside from the um, ball joint that was loose that I described earlier, the entire rest of the power steering system was intact and functioning properly. So there are no problems that would cause the car not to steer appropriately? Objection. Leading. Sustain this to the form of a question. Please rephrase. Did you observe any problems that would, did you observe any problems with regard to the steering? Aside from the ball joint, no. Thank you. Now, in your report, you indicate a gross vehicle weight rating. 
you see that on page five of ten? Objection, relevancy. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I do. What is that? The gross vehicle weight rating is the amount of weight that the vehicle can physically carry safely, and that number is administered by the manufacturer. So that includes people within that car? Is that what you're saying? Objection. Speculative. <coughs> Overruled. The witness may answer based upon his training and experience. Yes, that would include all vehicle, uh, the vehicle weight, occupants, and cargo. And the curb weight, what is that? I mean, generally, what is it? Not Objection leading. Overruled. The witness may answer based upon his training and experience. The curb weight of the vehicle is the weight of the vehicle as it rolls off the floor at the assembly plant, and that's without fuel and um, coolant and oil and things like that, and it's a dry weight of the vehicle. It's what the vehicle itself with nothing in it physically weighs. Okay. Thank you. If someone had reported hearing a clicking sound while this car was driving in front of them, was there anything that you found in your report that would be consistent with a clicking sound being heard? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. There was a lot of damage to the front of the vehicle. Um, it would be impossible to say what a clicking noise could come from, um, being as there's a lot of moving components <coughs> under the hood with the belt pulley, um, the engine fan, things like that, anything could be stuck in a tire. It would be impossible to say if there would be a clicking noise from this vehicle. I was actually not able to drive it physically to test it. I was only able to just start it. Can I ask why you were unable to drive it? Objection. Relevancy. <laughs> Overruled. The witness may answer. Uh, there's actually two reasons I was unable to drive it. One, again, with DNA evidence on the exterior of the vehicle. Two, there wasn't enough gas in the vehicle to move it. So the car was on empty when you, when you observed it? Objection leading. Sustained us to the form of the question. How much gas was in the car when you inspected it? Um, Objection leading. Ask the answer. Um, overruled the witness may answer. There was, uh, the gauge read E for empty and the notation on the infotainment center originally said two miles to empty and then on the second key cycle it said one mile to empty. When you said key cycle, when you started it, what or when you turned the key, what observations of A did you make? Objection leading. Overruled the witness may answer. So when I tried to start the vehicle, it was very sluggish. It turned over, but it wouldn't fire, it wouldn't do anything. And then it made like a hiccup sound, like it was going to try to start, mimicking basically a vehicle that's out of fuel. And when I tried turning the key again, then the vehicle actually did start, did idle, and did run like it was supposed to. Um, that's when I saw that the fuel gauge, the distance to empty gauge, went from two miles to one mile, indicating that the vehicle was very much so out of fuel almost. And um, I recorded this with my camera, and I tapped the throttle to do a rev test on the engine. The engine revved and went back to an idle. When it went back to an idle the second time, it then sputtered and turned off. Which would indicate what? would indicate that it's not getting enough fuel to run correctly. Thank you. Now, if a witness had testified that when the vehicle went in front of them, they heard uh, a high pitch, like a rubbing sound, um, based upon your examination, what would that be consistent with? Objection, hearsay. Overruled, the witness may answer. Um, there's a lot of different things that could cause that. It could be heavy acceleration from someone pressing the throttle on the vehicle. It could be noise that is amplified as because the um, engine bay is now open to the exterior, so you can hear the engine noises coming from the engine bay of the vehicle. Um, it could be an exhaust-related item. It could be a lot of different things, to be honest. When you were doing an examination of the undercarriage of the vehicle, <coughs> did you observe a muffler? No, I did not. I want to show you what's been previously admitted, Exhibit 73. It'll show on the screen in front of you, and I'd ask that it be published as well. Objection, leading. Um, overrule. Permission to publish 73. 
Sir, do you see the, the picture that's um, marked Exhibit 73? It's not actually marked, but it is Exhibit 73. I do. What is depicted in that photograph? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled based on his training and experience. The witness may answer. That it appears to be an exhaust muffler and a couple chunks of wood and overturned dirt. The muffler that's observed in this picture, would that be um, consistent or inconsistent with um, a 2010 Ford Escape? Objection, speculative. Overruled, this witness may answer and provide an opinion. Go ahead. By just looking at a picture. Overruled, the witness may answer. Yeah, y'all think y'all You can cross-examine the witness about that, sir. Uh, Go ahead. to, y'all trying to pull a fast one. It is a vehicle muffler without seeing the ends of it and where the inlet, outlet are, and actual measurements, it would be impossible to see what vehicle it came from, but it did. it is an automotive muffler. And sir, at the end of your inspection, do you come to a conclusion with regard to the mechanical fitness of this vehicle? I do. And what was that conclusion? Um, my conclusion was that the tie rod on the left front end of the vehicle that's responsible for steering the joint was worn and had been worn prior to the crash um, this is not something that just happens immediately or overnight if it would have been due to crash damage that this was damaged i would expect to have seen a lot more impact in that area with bent metal <coughs> or distorted items um, the tie rods are very tough parts so that to me indicates that it was worn prior to the crash occurring and the tire um, obviously unless somebody changed it in between the crash occurring and my inspection the tire was a different size than the other three um, prior to the crash and it had been driven like that. Um, I did not see any issues from the tire rod affecting steering as far as it relates to the alignment of the vehicle. Once things are worn and they start to get excessively worn, they manifest themselves in incorrect tire wear. Tire might chop or feather. That was not present on this vehicle. Um, had the left rear tire been an issue on the vehicle, I would have expected to see that manifest itself in an ABS, um, which is an anti-lock brake system failure or a trouble code in the vehicle. When I ran the vehicle and with the key in the ignition in the on position, there were no diagnostic trouble codes present on this vehicle indicating any issue whatsoever. And two things that I, I guess I need to cover. Do you check to see if there are any recalls in a vehicle in coming to your conclusion? Objection, speculative, and do we still need this exhibit? Oh, thank you. We can take that down, and your objection's noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. I do check for recalls, yes. Were there any on this vehicle? There were not recalls on this vehicle. There was only an extended um, service warranty from Ford, which had since elapsed due to the mileage on the vehicle. Now you talked about the brake system in terms of the, the brake pedal within the car and it's, um, that it was operating correctly. Do you recall that testimony? Objection leading. Overruled. It's foundational. Uh, the witness may answer. Yes, I do. Now, when a, a person activates that brake pedal, what is happening within the car? Um, there's actually a lot of things that happen within the car when you activate the brake pedal. Um, when you press the brake pedal, um, it pushes on a, it's called a push rod, but it actually pulls on it. It pulls on the rod, which goes into the brake master cylinder, and that master cylinder is what pumps hydraulic fluid from the um, brake fluid reservoir to each independent wheel on this vehicle. It's equipped with anti-lock brakes. It goes through an ABS modulator first. Um, from there, it sends a signal out to stop or slow down, depending on the amount of pressure that you apply inside the cab. Depends on how much braking force you get at the wheel ends. Um, in a very heavy brake application, as I had discussed before, where the vehicle is still trying to uh, maintain momentum, the ABS system can override and that's where you would get the vibration in the pedal that many of you may have felt before. That's your ABS system doing its job, not allowing the wheels to lock themselves up. What it's actually doing is pulsating the fluid in the vehicle. And when you talk about brake pads, 
um, how do the brake pads, where are they located and how do they relate to the pressing down of a brake pedal? Objection leading. Overrule the witness for the answer. So when the brake fluid reaches the each wheel end, there's a set of calipers with pistons and those pistons actually come out and they act like a clamp and they squeeze the two brake pads together. They're located between the two sides of the piston and on the exterior of the brake rotor. And what that does is it creates a pinching motion and that pinching motion slows the rotation of the disc down, which is the brake disc, which is attached to the wheel hub. And that's what slows your vehicle. And just for the record, he was using his right hand uh, to demonstrate kind of a squeezing motion. He had an, and I would describe his hand in a C motion, maybe three to four inches between the thumb and the fingers and then pressing together a couple of inches. Go okay. ahead. Are there any other components to the braking system um, in a car? Objection leading. Overall. There's a parking brake system in the vehicle. But other than that, so you've covered every aspect of the braking system in this particular vehicle, is that correct? Objection. Speculative. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes, I have. Did you observe anything, anything at all, that would have prohibited this vehicle from stopping if the brake pedal had been applied? No. Anything that you observed or documented with it during or in your mechanical inspection report that would have contributed to this, the crash shiz that this car was involved in? Objection. Overruled, though. The witness may answer. No. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, cross exams? During your inspection, did you see any bully holes? Yes, I did. Do you recall where? Back up. Do you recall how many bully holes you observed? I do not recall a number of them, no. I knew there were more than one. The ones that you observed, do you recall where they were? I do believe one might have exited through either the windshield or rear window and one was in the side of the vehicle if I remember correctly. And did you find any shell cases? No I did not. And you said you did the inspection on December 6th? That's correct. Uh, do you know if the if the vehicle had been uh, uh, do you know if anyone attempted to start the vehicle in between that time mm -hmm. of the crash in your inspection? Not to my knowledge, no. But you don't know for sure? That's correct. <clears throat> uh, you made reference to the left rear tire being... Uh, being bigger than, than the other tires? Yes. Um, can you give a little bit more clarity on uh, how that would affect the vehicle? So one larger tire on the vehicle would obviously make the vehicle lean ever so slightly away from whichever side is larger than the other. Um, in this case, the amount of difference between the two tires, it's about an inch and a half in difference in radius so in radius you get half of that amount in height so it would be about three quarters of an inch difference in height that amount of difference is not noticeable in a vehicle um, the other thing that it would cause is premature tire wear from one side to the other um, over time to where one vehicle that one tire might wear faster than the other um, the suspension might not act correctly because it's, it's not at the same ride height anymore. So eventually over time those are things I would expect to potentially see from that. Each vehicle acts differently with different size tires on it. There's no one size fits all.
So different vehicles act differently. It to uh, to having a a bigger fitting tire. Yes. Uh, you made reference to it uh, to the uh, to a vehicle leaning away from the side that's bigger. Or Correct. Would that in any way create a slight pull to the vehicle to either side? In my experience, that small amount would not know. And you made reference to the high beams. Uh, I, I don't remember exactly what you said referring to the high beams. Uh, I guess you made reference to them being used at some point? The high beams were activated when I did my inspection, meaning that um, when the headlights are on, they were in high beam mode. The um, selector stick was pressed forward for the high beams. It, why would a vehicle use high beams? Usually a driver uses high beams to see better or to illuminate things better. So it, that would primarily refer to if it was nighttime? Correct. Would you say with your expertise it wouldn't make sense for a vehicle to use high beams in the daytime? There are limited uses for them in the daytime, yes. And what are some of the uses from, from your knowledge? Generally, um, the high beams shine brighter, so even with sunlight shining on them, um, other vehicles can see them. It's a thing that we use on the highway as law enforcement sometimes. Um, we'll use the high beams at a crash scene. We'll turn the high beams on so oncoming traffic coming in during the daytime sees that brighter light from the vehicle. It's just a little bit of a thing to help oncoming vehicles see. So, so it would essentially be for uh, identification purposes? Not so much for identification, no. Well, what do you mean when you refer to uh, for oncoming traffic to be able to? More for visibility is what I mean, so that it stands out to the other traffic. It doesn't look like it belongs because the lights look very bright. It gets the other driver's attention, the same as the red and blue lights on the top of it the cars. Gets them to notice that law enforcement is present. Correct. That's what I meant by ID purpose, for them to be able to, to see. Then yes. Were you able to inspect the entire engine? I was not able to inspect the entire engine. And what parts of the what parts of the engine were you not able to inspect? Uh, the only parts that I was unable to inspect would be down in the front by the belt pulleys area. I could see that the radiator was pushed into it, but I couldn't see what components had been damaged by that. Um, as far as like water pump or anything like that um, and I do not usually take the engines down meaning I don't take them apart as part of my inspection anyways um, my main under the hood inspection components would be non-engine related aside from the throttle you made reference to the water pump did you notice any water leaking uh, yes there was coolant that had leaked from the vehicle from the water pump I don't know where it actually had leaked from, but I know that there was a lack of coolant in the vehicle. It could have come from a lot of various different places. It was no longer leaking when I saw it. It was empty. So you didn't actually observe it leaking? Correct. So it would be fair to say you don't know where the leaking came from? That's correct. Were you told that the vehicle was leaking? No, it just has a low coolant level, meaning it leaked from someplace, or it had never been filled properly. 
so at that time it'd be fair to say you weren't sure if it had been filled properly or if it was leaking either is possible but it'd be fair to say you didn't know for sure which of the two correct uh, you made reference to a loose ball joint um, can you give a little bit more clarity on exactly what is a ball joint so the ball joint is at the wheel end when you turn your steering wheel in your vehicle there's a shaft attached to the wheel it goes down to a rack and pinion system the pinion is a round gear the rack is a flat piece of metal with gear teeth on it as you turn it pushes the tie rods left and right as you turn left and right on the end of each of those tie rods is a ball and socket joint much like um, the hip joint on a human being it's a ball that fits inside of a socket and what that does is it allows the wheel to turn left and right as it's being pushed by the tie rod without any binding or any issues in between that is clarity I, I don't know anything about cars so and you said there was a loose ball joint Yes, the left front was loose. And to what effect could that affect the vehicle? Uh, the amount that it was loose, it would only wear more with more use. Um, as those components start to wear down, they start to have a little play. The longer the vehicle is operated without proper repairs, the worse the play gets. Um, the worse the play gets, then you can start having issues with um, improper tire wear and so on and so forth until it gets to the point that it actually separates the ball and socket themselves will separate from each other. And then what happens at that point? If the ball and socket joint separate, um, you would lose steering at that wheel. The other wheel would still be able to steer. From your inspection, can you tell how roughly how long this loose or this ball joint was loose? I cannot tell exactly how long, no. I can say that it was loose before the crash occurred, just based on the fact that it was worn, not broken. So with your expertise, would it be fair to say that that needed to be taken care of? Yes, that needed to be corrected. And you made reference to the gas. Um, the, the vehicle having difficulty starting, would that be fair to say? Yes. And uh, reference to the axles, you, you made reference to uh, taking them off the vehicle? The axle I do not take off of the vehicle at all. Uh, what did you do in regards to the axle? The axle ends, wheel ends, that's where the brake components are mounted. So I remove the wheel and tire from the actual axle end. I think that's what I was referring to. Okay. I'm sorry if I misquoted. I know you made some reference to removing something. I, I just assume you meant the axle. Um, when you inspect the axle and remove, you said the wheel? Yes. Um, what, what is being inspected at that point? Um, so when I remove the wheel and tire from the vehicle, I remove all four of them one at a time. And that's where I actually look at the brake components themselves, being the brake pads, the brake calipers, um, pistons inside the caliper, brake rotors, um, and then I get a better view of the tie rod that I was just speaking about because it's actually next to the wheel on the axle end of the vehicle. You said the tire tire rod? The tie rod ball joint that was loose. Oh, okay. So what, so I think you just were clear about the ball joint and tire rod. Is, is there a difference between the two? Yes, the ball joint is the, the joint itself and it's on the end of the tie rod.
did you notice anything wrong with the tie rod? The actual tie rod, not the ball joint? No, there was nothing wrong with the tie rod. Just one second, I'm just looking over these notes. Go ahead. On uh, page nine of your report, and you did give some clarity to this, I'm just <coughs> curious to know on page nine, well, first of all, you, you wrote this report yourself, correct? Yes. On page nine, the second sentence, um, I'm assuming you still have the exhibit 83? Yes, sir. It says, I noted a worn tie rod end on the left front wheel end. Was was that in reference to the ball joint and not the tie rod? Yes. They're, they're mm -hmm. one and the same. The tie rod end is a ball joint. It's two different ways to refer to the same component. Okay, I was... Clarity. It's, it doesn't say ball joint right here would that be fair to say correct and what is the the high mount brake lamp the high mount brake lamp is on the back of the vehicle you have the right brake light and turn signal, left brake light and turn signal, and then there's the third brake light that's a, like usually in the rear window or at the top of the back of the hatch of the vehicle. That's the high mount brake lamp. Okay. And it was inoperable when you inspected it? That's correct. Both of those were inoperable during inspection. So they didn't work? Correct. So it would be fair to say if someone was viewing the vehicle from behind, they would be able to see be because those were in opera. Yes, at the time of inspection, those lights did not work. And you also stated that it, it is unknown if they were working prior to the crash or damaged during the crash. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. That you would, you would know either way. No, I would not have a way to tell when that light bulb went out. No further questions. Right, thank you. Any redirect? <coughs> Before you do that, I'm just going to have my jury stand for a second. Go ahead. <coughs> Testifying on cross-examination that the right and high mount brake lamp were inoperable. Do you recall that? Yes. How about the left um, brake lamp? Was that operable or inoperable? Objection. Leading. Overruled. The witness may answer. The left stop lamp was working. Now, sir, just going back again to this ball joint, you stated that, I guess, was your testimony on cross-examination that <clears throat> unless the ball and socket is separated, you can still safely operate that vehicle? Objection. Mischaracterizes what was said. Well, based on the form of the question, I'll allow the witness to answer. Yes. <clears throat> and the ball and the socket on this vehicle, were they separated? They were not. Thank you. Now, your inability to fully inspect the engine, I want to direct you to that area of the vehicle. Does the engine control acceleration? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, it requires driver input. Does the engine control braking? 
No, it does not. Does the engine control steering? Objection. Where's the relevancy? Um, overrule. The witness may answer. No, it does not. Does the engine control gear shifting? Objection. Relevancy. Overrule. The witness may answer. It does not. Finally, sir, you had talked about um, actually coolant or some type of water. I wasn't sure if you're talking about the water pump or the radiator. Do you know what was leaking, if anything? Objection. Accident answer during the cross. Well, overrule the witness may answer. It's redirect. Um, yes, yeah, so water pump, water coolant, it's all interchangeable um, as far as the cooling system for the engine goes and the coolant system was low at the time of inspection and had been leaking but from where I do not know. And again, does that control the steering? No. The braking? No. The acceleration? No. Finally, sir, you had talked about on cross-examination the presence of the high beams being on during the daylight. Do you recall that line of questioning? Yes. Specifically, you had indicated that sometimes the state patrol uses their high beams during the day. What was that for? Objection. That was answered. Overrule. The witness may answer. It's redirect. To increase visibility. Is that of any assistance if a vehicle is coming up behind people? Objection. Speculative. Based on his training and experience, I will allow him to answer. No. Thank you. Nothing further. All right, thank you. You may step down. I will take that. Thank you, sir. And uh, once the witness passes, I'll excuse the jury for an afternoon break. It's uh, just about 3.06. We'll take about 15 minutes. I'll rise for the jury. Mr. Burks, I know the last thing you said, I heard you say it, that's hilarious. What were you referring to? I was referring to, like, are you serious? This, some of the same, some of the same things that I asked on, uh, when, when it's my time to question the witness can be overruled. But when the same thing is done, an object, it's, not, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's just thrown. It's just thrown to the side. I just, I just think that's funny. Well, I sir, really do. I don't find it funny, number one. Uh, number two, um, you're not in my the, position either. The court rules on the objections at the time that the objections are made. I know, and I wanted to address this briefly. You can have a seat. Um, you had questioned during the testimony of this witness, um, Exhibit 83, um, because I believe what you were saying is, and you can tell me if I'm wrong on this, uh, the copy of the report you have does not have an exhibit sticker on it. It does. Right. And, um, the, Which, you want to see it? I, I don't doubt that your copy does not have an exhibit sticker uh, because at the time the report was provided to you, uh, and I'll have the state correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, it would have been provided uh, through the course of discovery. I'd also note that on April, I believe, 22nd of 2022, the state filed a notice of expert naming uh, Inspector uh, Ryan Schultz as an expert witness and indicated it that he would testify consistent with his uh, 
report and then i directed your attention to the statutes in the rules of evidence dealing with expert testimony specifically starting at nine o seven point oh two through nine o seven point oh seven um... that is why i didn't stop during the testimony to have a discussion outside the presence of the jury because at that point the objection to not having an exhibit sticker on your report is not uh... would not prevent the court from receiving the exhibit once the proper foundation was laid which in my opinion it was and the fact that your document didn't have that specific exhibit sticker uh... doesn't diminish the fact that uh... i know from your cross-examination you were referring to the report at times you referred to it by page number it was clear from your questioning that you had reviewed it i would just note two examples uh... you asked some questions regarding visibility and the impact of the high beams that was one example and then secondly uh... questioning him about the ball joint and whether it needed attention and what that would mean uh... and so i just wanted to make that didn't come from the report your honor the only thing that came from the report was from page nine when i was trying to get clarity about why i said worn tire tie rod oh and you actually questioned the witness about the uh... different tire and what that would mean uh... so i thought three uh... good areas of cross-examination uh... that you covered as far as the other issues i think that you might have when there's redirect uh... i'm not going to explain what redirect is sir but again from my position uh... there's direct examination there's cross-examination the state or any witness any party that calls a witness always has the opportunity to ask the direct exam questions and then redirect based upon what's asked during cross-examination sometimes that does mean there's some repetition uh... but i didn't see anything through the redirect of this witness that i thought was in improper uh... so i just wanted to make a record of that i am going to caution you sir do you understand what i was saying you are but you during multiple times during the questioning of that witness you were mumbling under your breath uh... you say disparaging remarks toward the court toward the witness or toward the process so if it was disparaging what did i say sir you say things like it's not fair or you go you make noises that suggest like you're disgusted with the ruling that is made so you're assuming what i mean by that and when did i say mr brooks i'm just making a record because it's important that you're making an incorrect record it's important that you demonstrate courtesy and decorum through these proceedings and that you give respect to the witnesses who are testifying in the process uh... did the witness feel disrespected did the witness say anything about feeling disrespected? Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to engage in this I don't think back he did. and forth with you because, first of all, it's a mischaracterization of my observations, number one. And yeah, number but your two, observations are job. incorrect. It's if, my if it, job to ensure that the under 906.11 that there's the effective presentation, uh, and I'll just refer you to that once again. I'll read it. Uh, into the record. You don't, you don't need to read it. Under 906.11, just make sure 11, that you make a correct. The judge shall exercise record. reasonable don't lie control on the over the mode and order of interrogating witnesses and presenting evidence to get address to all every of the time. following: make the interrogation and presentation every effective time. for the ascertainment of truth, avoid needless consumption of time, protect witnesses from harassment or undue embarrassment. It go, sub two talks about the scope of cross examination. Sub three talks about leading questions and when leading questions may be used uh, to develop the witness's testimony. Um, so with that, we'll take our break. I'll start the fifteen minutes. It's three thirteen. We are in recess. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I did um, actually take note of um, when the court overruled one of um, Mr. Brooks' objections. His um, response was, stop trying to be slick. Yeah, I did say that. So, just for the record, I thought that that was very disrespectful. Thank you, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Judge, can we discuss scheduling at some point as well, either now or on the return? Well, we'll come back. Why wasn't that addressed uh, right when it happened? 
Honestly, Mr. Brooks, I'm really trying hard not because to that, highlight that's the, that's your misconduct the definition of trying to be slick. during the trial. I'm trying my best here to, I don't frankly, see that. minimize pointing I don't see those it. things out to the jury and instead pointing them out outside the presence of the jury. You may have noticed I've even started to say I'd remind the jurors that the comments of the parties or the attorneys are not evidence so as to cast a broad brush and not simply highlight your conduct. I haven't noticed anything. And I, um, I but all right, we're in recess. Thank you. What conduct you're referring to. If you're, not, if you're going to be biased, then somebody.